I'm gonna show you a super simple hack that can turn any polygon into something plausibly Lego. We GIS folks are just big kids who never really grew up. We love to play at building worlds. It's no different than when we were little. And a lot of the times we actually still play with literal toys, playing with Lego. Some of us call it Legos, I do. And I know that the first step in setting up a Lego PlayStation is getting a nice clean open surface. I'm going to go to Living Atlas, an amazing repository of data available to you. And I'm gonna search for global background. There it is, global background. What is this? It's just a big rectangle that covers the whole world. What a delicious hack. Now let's make it look like an actual table. Instead of a solid fill, I'll give it a picture fill. That's intriguing. I'll navigate to a picture I've made of wood and I'll set its size to 512 so we can actually see it. And now we've got a nice surface to build on. All right. Now let's take a look at our land areas. Instead of a stroke and a solid fill, I'll go into the structure and I'll add a marker layer. It's just a bunch of dots and I can get rid of my stroke and the fill and start working with the properties of these things. My first order of business is to turn that into squares. Squares, this sounds pretty familiar. Now by default, the spacing of these squares is 16 points by 16 points and it clips at the boundary. So you can see the little squares are chopped off at the edge. We want to only keep squares if their center is inside our area. We'll do this. Kind of looks like the background set dressing for a news show. Let's increase the size until they touch each other. And we'll give it a nice vibrant orange. Now bear with me, at this point, I'm gonna veer into Bob Ross territory and talk about blocking in with color and then adding light and shadow. I'm gonna duplicate this layer twice and go back to the layers. And this bottommost layer, I'm gonna make it look like a shadow. For the shape fill symbol, I'll choose this one with the solid fill and a stroke. I'll make the stroke really thick. And I'm going to dig into this polygon a little bit closer. I'll make the fill black. And instead of a solid stroke, I'll make this a gradient stroke, which goes from fully transparent black to fully opaque black. Now we've got something that looks kind of shadowy. Now it's time to address this guy and make this one look like a highlight. In the shape fill symbol, I'll choose this linear gradient fill as a starting point, but I'll dig into it and tweak things. I'll make the top color semi-transparent white and the bottom color fully transparent white. And I'll play with this angle a little bit. And I'll make it extend 100%. Let's see how this looks. Plausibly plasticine. But all we've got are a bunch of squares. The whole point of Legos is the little circular stud that locks everything together. I'll go into the structure. I'm going to duplicate each one of these layers. This one, this one, and this one. And I'll drag each one up to the top. so that I have a repeating set of highlight, color fill, and shadow. And back in my layers, instead of a square, I'm just going to make these circles. And I'll resize them to shrink them down a little bit. And for that shadow one, I'm gonna nudge it a little bit to the lower right. Let's see what we've got. Goodness sakes, I believe we've done it. Now, unlike actual Legos, we can actually zoom in on our creation and it's happy to re-render. And you can also reproject it. I'll choose Boyan Shaurich's equal Earth. Loads of fun for big kids. 